your boy Moose. Welcome back to, Welcome back to our channel. channel. Today, well, we just watched the Thor trailer mm -hmm. and we were left pretty speechless. We didn't know what to do of it. So, body. you know, we do like every, you guys probably do. You know, we go to New York Star <laughs> to check out what uh, he has to say and things that we missed and see his breakdown. Yeah, so we're going to be reacting to New York Star's breakdown of the Thor Love and Thunder mm -hmm. trailer. And he posted this an hour ago, so it's very fresh. So let's get straight to it. Before we do, I want to tell you quickly about the sponsor for our last video, which was... Anna Luisa. Oh, Luisa. Um, I want to make sure you guys use our code Boof and Mushi to go check out Anna Luisa. They are a sustainable company and they make awesome, affordable, cute, beautiful jewelry yes. pieces that if you're a girl, you know, go buy for yourself. But it also makes great gifts for your significant other Come from if Brooklyn. you're a guy. And they are based in Brooklyn. I wear their pieces all the time. If you're familiar with the channel, mm -hmm. I've spoken about them a few times. Yep. I am actually wearing jewelry from them right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. This piece is amazing. I also have this set in the green. That's my favorite. I love the green. I gotta tell you. But this blue. Mm -hmm. It's hitting. <laughs> it's hitting. It's hitting with it's, the bright colors it's, too. It's blueing. The blue is blueing. The blue is blueing. And, yeah. and they also have it in black. So if you are a black girl, you know. You know, not a black, black girl, girl, but if you black like black, you know, go go grab it and use our code Boof and Mushi, yep. and check use the link in our description box to go check out Ana Luisa and buy it for your family, friends, mom, dad, girlfriend, boyfriend, uncle, auntie, anybody, anybody that doesn't even have to be specific and everybody. for a holiday, just anything. I'll also out of yeah, sheer love. yeah. You, you, you got it. Yeah, I'll also include cool clips of the other pieces that they sent me. But this, I've showered in this. I, I love their pieces. It doesn't turn black, or you know. Green. It's a, or green. Um, they're 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 amazing pieces. Yeah. So go check it out if you want to get somebody a gift. And without further ado, let's get into this breakdown because I am still speechless from yeah. the Thor trailer. I didn't know. I couldn't wrap my mind around it. So I need somewhere to start. I'm ready to go. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's go. Back to New Rock Stars. I'm Eric Boss. Hi, Eric. Hi, Eric. Down to the latest trailer for Thor: Love and Thunder, which finally reveals yeah. the face of the villain, Gore Jesus. the God Butcher, and like me, he looks sick. It is time yes. for a play by frame breakdown of all the details you missed, and not just because this is the second Marvel trailer in one week to lead with ass. Oh my God! We actually do. Isn't that, that what? Shot because there are Zeus. The guy yeah, playing Zeus. Uh, Russell Crowe. Yeah. How did I miss that? Yeah, Russell Crowe. And our friends at Shortbox are giving away the first appearance of Jane Foster as Thor, what if number 10 from 1978? Stick around to the end of this video to learn how to enter to win. Let's okay. Go. Okay. Let's do it. Kids, get the popcorn up. Let me tell you the story of the space function. <laughs> His coat went on the other guy. How did I miss that? I missed that too. Okay, we open with this same shot of Thor meditating beneath this wisdom tree. That There's we saw two people last coming by him. Key difference: they've now added two figures hiking up to Thor from behind. Uh -huh. It looks like a male and a female. Perhaps Peter Quill does look like Pratt silhouette there. And then I would say either Nebula or Mantis, but this woman doesn't exactly match their silhouettes. So maybe Valkyrie, maybe Jane, maybe Gamora. Nah. Will this movie finally remake Marion Gamora with the rest of the Guardians? We Too can soon. actually see that same tree behind Korg as he's oh. inhaling the kids. Maybe okay. telling the kids, hey. So the same planet. Uncle Thor right now, and he's getting some alone time. Now, this <laughs> blue-skinned race is actually the same tribe that the Guardians fight alongside in the other shots. Oh, in there, the Zatan good. tribe Zatan of the planet Centauri Four. The same oh, that's cool right there. Yeah, the so that's his race. Kinship with this tribe. No, you see him on the floor. Yondu's home planet. So this planet is Yondu's home world of Centauri Four. Mm -hmm. And would make these other planets and stars in the sky part of the Alpha Centauri system. Oh. Alpha Centauri being the largest sun in the sky. And it's interesting that we can see so many of the other planets in the horizon because it could be how this movie visually conveys my theory that Centauri's neighboring planet of Centauri 6 referenced in Eternals as a past planet that the Eternals helped destroy to birth the Celestial could get referenced in this movie we might even see the ruins of that this planet is deep. in the sky and that this is, is deep lore here 
The reason world building hates all gods now. We see Thor powering up Stormbreaker. We actually see him coming down on whoever these raiders are yeah. in the final shot of the trailer. Then Thor pops the collar of his leather that was a cool vest poster. on the Benatar while the other guardians turn to look. Actually, it looks like he may have Jesus borrowed some of these clothes from Peter Quill. Like this looks like it used to be Quill's red jacket, but now with the sleeves removed because like, yeah, there's no way those tree trunks are gonna fit in the sleeves. Actually, the shirt he's wearing looks like an artistic display of the nine realms spread out across the interstate, okay. wow. pushing towards the Asgardian world's tree. And this whole tank and jeans look looks a lot like Kurt Russell's look in Big Trouble in Little China. Kurt Russell, of course, playing Peter Quill's yeah. father of the ego. Moving on. After saving planet Earth for the 500th time, Thor said, "Oh, I'm gonna change time." Yeah, we are. We <laughs> He went from dead bug to god bug. We have some new shots of New Asgard and Tonsberg, Norway, and it's stayed as a tourist that, attraction. Those now. are cool. Oh, oh, okay. Liners, one of them having the face of Volstagg, members of the Warriors 3 who died in Ragnarok. We can also see yeah. a gold course. Now, I'm not sure if these graves are ending. the same field where Hella broke Mjolnir and where Odin died. If so, it's kind of sad for tourism to carpet over that site. But actually, in the middle of that grave yeah. is some figure that might be just a golfer with his caddy, or it might be that pedestal that contains the broken shards of Mjolnir, those shards unable to be lifted and moved, and maybe now that's Thor just sitting on it, thinking. Then Thor uses Stormbreaker hmm. to change into his Asgardian leathers, so if those were Peter Quill's clothes, I guess they're gone now. We can see Korg reigning Thor's goats. Let's give this a shot. Tongri and Tongyost? I don't know, but they translate to Teeth Bearers slash Teeth Snarler and then Teeth Grinder. Oh, those are his goats. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mythology. But like in the shot of this from the first trailer, this one also is just framed in a weird way to make me think that there is a third character who has been digitally removed from yeah. the trailer. Now, I speculated it could be Beta Ray Bill from <gasps> the versions of... That would be so cool because they teased him in the first Thor, yeah. the second Thor. Yeah. That's the case. But behind them now in this shot, you can see more of those Very blue skinned Satorians. So this still would be that same planet. And if that white shot was showing Gamora, she would be another surprise character that they might want to leave out of the trailer. Mm -hmm. God, that, you know, that Gamora, makes sense. I, I maybe it could be. It may be. It could be. Then more shots of Thor's Mr. Incredible style workout routine. Battle <laughs> ropes with these chains on a giant skeleton. I'm still wondering if it could be one of the past gods that Gamora's captured and tortured. That Thor will again wears the trucker hat that previously had Mightiest Avengers on it. Then now he's sharpening over it. So <laughs> the strongest, strongest Avengers. Then Avengers is now just Avenger. He crossed out the X because there's only one there's of them. No more. Thor being the strongest Avenger, a recurring joke that's been in all these movies. Meanwhile, his whole book is modeled on Vincent D'Onofrio's character in Adventures of Babysitting with that girl. Oh, yes! One of uh, his fitness goals was to tow the entire Minotaur. The fact that he's able to take any steps at all is pretty impressive. I feel like this session is going to end with Quill just flooring it and yanking Thor off planet so that they can suddenly hit the brakes and then he like smacks up against the back with him. It's fine. <laughs> Right, That'd be me. And after all that, he reclaimed his title. Mia, Mia. The one and only. <laughs> Beefy. Oh, spoke too soon. Jay. He didn't have these so masks before. Dark Water, where and then it's from? back. From Asgard? These may be the Black Berserkers, who are Gore's minions from the comics, who he summons with okay. his sword, really extensions of himself. Since All Black was a weapon of the symbiote deity of Null in the comics, the Black Berserkers are, in a way, kindred of the symbiotes. Which, yes, remain so many properties, but Marvel doesn't have to explicitly go into the sword's symbiote backstory in this Venom, movie. It is nice Venom to see the like, people actively fighting off the Berserkers as well. It's not just the Asgard protectors of the Iron. I I her yard. I I don't know. Maybe we're <laughs> close civilians picking up pipes and stuff and beating them down. Now Thor tries to summon Mjolnir, but it hovers inches from his fingers and, and goes back to Jane. From Kyla DeRay. Jane Foster is the mighty Thor from Jason Aaron's comic run, in mm -hmm. which Jane uses Mjolnir to power up into Thor to escape her cancer treatments. Yes. This trailer may later hint at why Jane is hearing Mjolnir. I'll get to that in a bit. Right here, there is some odd mm -hmm. editing going on. Because in the reaction shot, Thor is suddenly now suited up in his brighter golden See? armor in his helmet, as opposed to his leather armor that he's wearing before. Yeah, 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 right. together. Maybe one earlier in the battle, and then one at the end of the battle where the two finally step up to each other. To be honest, there is something goofy about the framing here. Like, Thor right? is wearing the mask. This looks plated into this shot, as if they may be masking something. It doesn't new. look like, right. I'm just going to be surprised if this is exactly how it looks in the theatrical version of the movie. So why the armor upgrade? Why are all the characters wearing armor upgrades? I think it may be Jane as the mighty Thor wielding Mjolnir that causes all the Asgardians to suit up in this new badass look. Like, Jane... She looks amazing. I love Valkyrie. Let's right move on. The hair, everything. 
feels good too, but Valkyrie is a win for me. Eight years, seven months, and six days. He's still counting. Okay, so Jane is riding a Pegasus, the same kind of steed Valkyrie rode in Endgame. She's oh, that's Jane. I thought that was. Chamber. See two shots of it here, but there's a wider shot later in the trailer that gives us a big shot of it. It's filled with these golden statues that should look familiar to you. These are all Marvel cosmic entities. The clearest one to the far right is the Living Tribunal. Yeah, the three heads. Showing up. It's the three yeah. heads. Justice in the multiverse. So it's that's a sign that it's going to be relevant very soon Revenge. with Kang. They just made a cameo in Multiverse of Madness. Oh, shoot. I missed Thomas that. Mm -hmm. through, but in that case, all three faces were I knew that was going to be relevant. Maybe oh, okay. That we were on a different dimensional plane there. And of course, another one of the Living Tribunal statues showed up severed in the void in Loki. At the time, I speculated I saw that been a wow. reality where the Living Tribunal was overthrown, maybe by someone like Gore the God Butcher. The fact that the Living Tribunal showed up here is interesting. Interesting, but he's not alone because right behind the living tribunal is a bald statue that looks like the watcher. Yeah. The character voiced by Jeffrey Wright, and what if the watcher's being another cosmic entity that just I wonder if that really is the multiverse. <coughs> it's not supposed to interfere. But then if you slide to the left, there is a hooded figure, a skull. Red skull? Presumably Lady Death. Oh. The comics, <laughs> Red skull. Dirty I was about to say. Or, then on the left in the far back, there is a bald feminine figure who looks a lot like Infinity, the sister to Eternity. And then between them, I think that might be Eon, aka He Who Waits, an offspring of Eternity who's associated with the concept of time. Ooh, so geez, what is God. this place? That's a face when they got mom could love. Yes. Ripped, suggesting that it's not accessible through any physical means. I'm I'm wondering if this could be a shrine to the higher tier of cosmic beings oh. above the god tier, perhaps an MCU version. Just like when they went to the Pyramid of Giza the gods, and the gods who oversee the Asgardians and lend Mjolnir its power. Perhaps it was these figures who selected Jane to wield Mjolnir. Because oh. notice it's only here where she's channeling the lightning and the thunder mm. to power the hammer. These overseers of the multiverse may have taken mercy on Jane oh, Foster for her cancer movie, and seen some cosmic imbalance with Mjolnir being destroyed, selecting Jane as the all-time keeper of Thor's heart as the rightful wielder for this particular battle. And I say that this particular so because I don't know if the plan is to ultimately have Jane Foster be the permanent Thor going forward. That wasn't the case ultimately in the Mighty Thor comic run. I think ultimately I love her helmet. Mjolnir may be destroyed once it's more, different. and like Beta Ray Bill may be wielding Stormbreaker. Now, another way to interpret this is you could connect it to the temple art of Morag back in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1. That art depicted four figures, Death, Infinity, Eternity, and Entropy. Now, we don't know if these Entropy. five in this chamber are the only statues in this world. I don't know. There could be more out of frame. But either way, I think we are looking at the reigning hierarchy of cosmic authorities in the MCU. You have humans on one tier. Above them, you have Asgardians. They report to Zeus. Zeus in his tier literally being- Wait, the Asgardians? Report to Zeus. So what about gods of Olympus? Oh, I guess since uh, Asgard is since Odin is yeah. gone. Tier, including okay. Living Tribunal, Death, Uatu, okay, okay, okay. Eon, and Infinity. Now moving on, Thor says eight years, seven months, and six days since he and Jane broke up. Now Thor Ragnarok may sound like he and Jane's breakup was recent. So eight years, seven months after that would track with this movie keeping up with the MCU present day of 2025. Oh. And Jane thinking three to four years is not her losing track or not caring about Thor because remember Jane was blit. Her face showed up on their screens. Yeah. Oh, yes. 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 So I was right. Yes, yes. yes. Now, she was right. Screenplay also covered Wong dusted as well, despite Spider-Man No Way Home ignoring that, making Wong Sorcerer Supreme. That's true. She was blipped, but that would hardly be the first so, MCU plot hole. She was so, blipped, then. If she was blipped. Her, it would only feel like three or four years instead of eight and a half. Then Chris Hemsworth makes, I think, my favorite vocalization he has ever made. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love her braids. They are on Satori 4. I just love all these shots of Valkyrie's armor, that bold black and silver color with yes. the Norse logo. Mm. The yes. bold black and silver she makes her good. visually at least a perfect fit for what I think will be the final battle of this movie, a desaturated one with gore. And yes. we'll move in the next section, so let's move on. The only ones who gods care about is themselves. Jesus! This is my vow. All gods will die. I love it. 
So we hear Christian Bale as Gore the God Butcher. This interesting shot, though, of a piece of rock floating toward a rift in space toward a lonely planet on the other side, maybe Earth, maybe someplace else. It looks else. black and white. That rock surface is a kind of cage structure. It actually looks like the red cape of Thor inside of it. This might be how Gore navigates from place to place. Then the hilt of All Black the Necker Sword, or whatever they're going to call this sword in this movie, lifts into Gore's hand, and then Gore reveals himself, pushing out of a snaking tangle of inky vines. That looks so scary. his hood to show his scarred face, white robes stained with blood from his mouth and his mm. open wounds. It seems like we only ever see Gore in black and white, except for his eyes. And they especially boosted the contrast in this shot, giving it a noirish quality. Like I love it. Miller and Robert I love Rodriguez it too. Sin City. This up contrast just really sharpens all the scars and the lines of his face. Yeah. A withered look, making him look both very strong, but also dead inside. Like the most jacked corpse you've ever seen. A man who's <laughs> lost everything, has nothing to lose. Vengeance incarnate. Now, Gore in the comics says an interesting headpiece and has no this, nose. In the comics, he has no nose. I am thankful they let Christian Bale keep his nose. Because I don't care if Voldemort's <laughs> supposed to have a snake nose in the books. I know he does. It's just Ray Fiennes looks stupid in those movies. They tried to make it work. It did not work. And it would have been better if they just let Ray Fiennes keep his damn nose. Weak. Christian Bale has a cool, scary, angular face and they are smart not to cover it up. Now, the vines that Gore pushes through may actually be a form of his sword. That black and white world could actually be a pocket realm that is created by All Black. Now, of course, one of Gore's victims is Falagar the Behemoth, a frame taken directly by Isad Rudin. I love Amazing this. Amazing yeah, artwork and Jason Aaron's storyline. Beautiful. And can we use this opportunity to beg Marvel Studios stop just giving these comics writers and artists a special thanks in the credits of the movie. Pay them as much as you're paying the directors, especially if you're lifting the frame and putting directly in the marketing Amen. of the movie. True. Which is directly going to lead to advanced pre-sales blowing up for this movie. Yep. Pay right. Pay your artists Amen. on the next clip. I was going to say that was very, very impressive what you did back there. Okay, Jane. This is my first bad guy. Do you see her arms? Jesus. So well, she likes both Stormbreaker girls. into the goat boat, which is Impressive. whatever we call it now. And that boat leaves a rainbow wake as Stormbreaker has the power of Bifrost, the rainbow bridge. Jane and Valkyrie help Thor fight off some Olympian guards. And here, and actually you can see even more clearly yes. in that butt shot. You can see Thor has some back tattoos. Yeah. And it looks like he inked Loki's helmet and a square shape that I think might be Mjolnir. And he might have inked everything he has lost on his Aww, back. So that might also include that could Odin, be. his mother Frigga, Jane, Tony Stark, Black Widow, all the things he has lost. So why are they fighting in Olympus here? I'm wondering if maybe when Thor showed up at Falgar's crime scene, Thor could have been falsely accused for killing these gods, as Olympus may think only Thor has the might to take down so many of them. Then an epic shot of Gore plunging his sword, clutching the blade into a planet or moon, destroying it. This yeah. would explain That's how he killed Falgar. I am wondering if Gore is doing this to try to kill a celestial that might be gestating inside. Do it while you can, Gore. It's about to become illegal in 26 states. Thor tells Jane you never forget your first <laughs> Guy, but yeah. there, okay, so Eric. Each other's first true loves, or at least she was his, and he will never forget her. On to the next. Yeah, that was intense. That was intense. Yeah. We trust. I love how he 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 looks more Olympian now. Yeah. I love that shot. God, I keep saying that. Fight Gore on this broken surface that he shattered before. The photography just looks incredible. It looks as it though does. Thor and Valkyrie are in the process of being desaturated during this fight. Like mm. Gore can be trained oh. the color and the life force from the whole world. Mm. You can see this especially as Valkyrie parries oh, Gore yes. using Zeus's lightning bolts. Like the rest of her body is desaturated, mm -hmm. but the color seems to be coming from that bolt. The same is happening with Thor amidst a blast from Stormbreaker. Other than the bolts, the rest yeah, of the yeah, shot has the yeah, color yeah, draining true. from it. So why is Valkyrie using Zeus's bolts? Maybe Zeus has been killed, and the ranking power of Olympus has temporarily passed down to her. She's been crisis. killed, then damn, like anybody can kill a, a god. Then all of the color is going to be drained until we are in complete black and white. The stylistic choice that we previously have only seen in the MCU and things like WandaVision and the first Captain America film in order mm -hmm. to invoke a deliberately nostalgic quality. But here it looks like the color changing is a direct consequence of factors within the scene. On to the last clip. Let's see who you are. I take Jesus. off your disguise. I take uh, off your disguise. <laughs> Foot too hard, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> eventually, great. So, Russell Crowe <laughs> Zeus sounds like he's committing to a Greek accent. Good for you, Russell. And I gotta love the word choice of 
flick. Which, uh, yeah, is becoming a bit of an MCU inside innuendo, because remember, Ant-Man in Endgame said, Flick me, Captain, as he stuck his butt out. <laughs> because if you spell out flick me in a Comic Sans word bubble, in all caps and italics, the L and the I begin to merge together to look like a U. So, you know, the line, you flick too hard, damn it, you get the idea. And I assume Jesus. someone will not be blurred out when we see this in theaters. I love you how everyone say his face, aside from Zeus, but including the guys and that bearded harpist. Meanwhile, Jane, Valkyrie, and Korg wear little cloaks while they sit in the stands. I didn't they're even they're see the harpist. Not that great in disguises, but in the official's photo that revealed a boss that they were not wearing those cloaks. Everybody so is tripping about that. Larger I love that. I can't that wait to see her. around them may have immense forms 10 feet tall, the way Towerit and Amit were in Moon Knight. Now, we can't really see Bastet too well here. Maybe we'll see her better in the IMAX aspect yep. ratio version of this trailer. But you can see from her feline ears, she is turning her head a bit, taking it in. Now, Bastet and Bast are both names referring to the Egyptian cat goddess, but also Bast is the Wakandan panther deity. Woo! This movie may suggest mythologies of Black Panther, and Moon Knight and Thor are all linked part of the same mythological system. She did. Uh, she did. She did. She confirmed it. Just yeah. one of many MCU afterlives along with the Duat Moon Knight. Maybe Bast and Bastet are the same entity. Maybe Black Panther is considered an avatar of Bast. And since in a way, she that, in a way. that hard-shaped Durban met Bast in 10,000 BC, really Wakanda mythology was the first mythology on the planet Earth in the MCU. Implying that may have influenced all the rest. That is everything I've done in this trailer. Really and really we are partnering true. with Short San Francisco Bay Area. I am back performing improv every other Saturday night, including this improv at 9 p.m. Within games improv in the mission, the stage works. We're in the East Coast, so that's so far. Yeah. Follow me on Instagram. Instagram. Sorry, I'd come to see ya. Subscribe to Nora Stars for more. Thank you so much, man. Whoa. That was fire. That was intense. That was very intense. I am so glad to see some of the stuff that I mentioned. Yeah. And some of the f stuff I was thinking about. He actually said it. Mm -hmm. So that would be so cool. Yeah. Oh, I am so hyped for this movie. Yeah, me too. Me too. I, really? One other thing that I really want to see is Bass. So if they're confirming the Olympic... Um, um goddam mm -hmm. you know uh, and then we're seeing the the greek gods uh, the greek, greek and gods, roman is pretty much almost Nor the same um norse gods norse god egyptian, egyptian gods yeah. it, it's so cool so uh, um Too they kind of like see kratos though anyway shut up <laughs> i fucking hate you <laughs> Anyway, anyway. This was so amazing. I absolutely cannot wait to see this movie. I feel as hyped as I did when I was yeah. going to see Doctors. Multiverse of Madness. You know, for me, like, I had a lot of expectations for Multiverse yeah, of Madness, yeah. which it, 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 I met some expectation and lost some. Yeah. But for this one, I'm... My expectations are a little bit low, but the hype is real for It's me. real, yeah. So I'm keeping it very low. Yeah. You know? You just don't want to be disappointed. Basically, but I'm seeing like it's not going to be that high level as Doctor Strange. And that's fine. That's okay. I'm just I'm overall excited to see Thor again. But I try to keep my expectations at a level that I don't get disappointed. Like people come out of the theater yeah. legit mad yeah. you know what i mean just and i'm like dude it. just enjoy it for what it is you know take it as what yeah. it is if something you wanted happened great if it didn't happen bruh it's not the end of the world yeah like it's cool it's fine but Relax. you know i get it hardcore fans you know especially marvel <laughs> toxic sometimes <laughs> i get it so I i'm just happy to see thor Jane, yes. Jane, Valkyrie. Jane did such a good job getting ready for this film. Just off of her looks alone, mm -hmm. I applaud her. I don't know how it's going to be, you know, in the movie, you know, you know how everybody's yeah. going to be, but everyone looks amazing. Jane and looks amazing. Mr. Bale. <laughs> Mr. Bale looks amazing. Good job. Um, if Russell Crowe yeah, Russell <laughs> looks Crow's amazing. Juice. Everyone looks amazing, yes. and I cannot wait to see it. It looks like it's going to be a visual treat, and I love that Marvel is has been doing so well visually yeah. lately, and they're um a, they're like giving their talents the space to explore certain things mm -hmm. and to like go out of that Marvel mold. Like if you look at Moon Knight, for example, yeah. there was no other connect. It, it's a standalone, you know. Yeah. Just very subtle. Yeah. Subtle references. Subtle, subtle references, crazy. but it's like 
it's like they're, they're it's not i don't feel like they're going away from the interconnectedness yeah. but they're not making it as it's not as important anymore in phase four like you can have like different fans for different things mm -hmm. and that's okay like somebody if you love shang chi you go and see shang chi and you don't need to see any prior movies before yeah, that to understand, understand shang chi and if you want if you love the moon knight comics you know and it's like the comics yeah you know what i mean if you love moon knight you read moon knight comics Strictly moon knight. If yeah you, if you like wolverine you just read wolverine exactly comics. Yeah. and then once in a while you know they have this interconnected you know crossovers and I feel like that's such a great way to do it. They started off the fandom mm -hmm. giving us this interconnected story. Mm -hmm. And now that they've presented this fandom to everybody, everybody, they've made a name for themselves when it comes to movies. Now they're telling more individual stories and it's giving them enough space to tell, you know, secular stories and i absolutely love that Very good point. I, I i love the interconnectedness i loved it but i also love that Stand they're along. getting the chance to tell standalone stories yeah. and to do cool things which by the way if you noticed it's where dc was driving at telling standalone stories always give credit and to now DC. marvel is fucking taking over that always too always give credit to dc <laughs> dc started all anyways yeah. Overall, hey, that's, that's sorry if I went on an tangent. <laughs> overall, this was our reaction to New Rock Stars Thor Love and Thunder Breakdown. It was very interesting. As usual, Eric, thank you so, so much. So much. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Not that you're gonna see this, but, but um, still, thank it you. was it's fun watching his videos. If you haven't, go check him out. And also don't forget to check out Ana Luisa. The link and will be in the description box and use our code Boof and Mushi so for 10% off. Please check it out. Go ahead. Yeah, if you want to support us. And also, we have Super Thinks. Super Thinks? On? Thanks. You can, like, buy a Super Thinks um, on our videos. Like, where it says to like and stuff like that. Yeah. In that row, it, there's a super thanks thing, mm -hmm. so you can donate. I, somebody, somebody donated five dollars. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. That was our first. Yeah. I didn't even. It was, it was awesome. it's amazing. That was a, a really good. Anyway, <laughs> if you want to support the channel, use the super thanks thing or just subscribe, yeah. like, and leave a comment. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see you in the next reaction video. Bye, Bye guys.